to become as a little child, you know, no wise enter the kingdom of heaven. Amen? Hallelujah. You see a kid get in the sandbox, and he's in there playing, the other kid's in there playing, and pretty soon one of them throws sand in the other one's eyes. Amen? They don't like it. Somebody screams, somebody hollers, somebody does it, but just a few minutes, they're still back in there playing because they love playing in the sand. Amen? That's the way it is with the gifts of the Spirit. That's the way it is with God and walking in the Spirit. Amen? Hallelujah. You know what? You can make a mistake. God will cover for you. Amen? He'll He'll go the extra mile to cover for you. But you're never going to, you're never, ever, ever going to move in God if you're afraid you're going to make a mistake. If there's fear in you, you're not going to be moving in God. You'll stay bound to the flesh. And you'll always say, boy, I wish I could hear from God like that. I wish I could move in God like that. Well, you can. You just got to find out that you love God and you love people more than you do yourself. Come on. Where you're not afraid of what somebody's going to say, somebody's going to do. Amen? How many of y'all know all the bad reports give you a good reputation? (laughs) Come on. When they preach against you, everybody will come out and see who you are. (laughs) Best advertisement you can get. Glory to God. It's the truth. God wants us to hear His voice, and He wants us to move with Him no matter where we're at. He wants us to know Him so clear and so sure that if we're sitting in a restaurant and he tells us about somebody, that we're not afraid to look at him and say something to him. Mm-hmm. Amen? He wants us to know. He doesn't want us guessing. Oh, man, I think I walked into a spirit there. You think? Come on, why can't you just go ahead and be sure? It's like the guy that always said maybe. You say, hey, you coming over the house? Maybe. Amen? How many of y'all like that answer all the time? Maybe. Come on. It's like full of indecision. Y'all, you got to choose to walk with God. you got to choose to hear God. you got to choose to experience God. you got to choose to not worry about everything else and everybody else, but just get into God. And you don't, you don't do that. Listen to me. You get into God by going after God. Did you know if you didn't know what one gift of the Spirit was, if you'll go after God, they'll start working in you? If you go after seeking after gifts, you'll struggle and struggle. I want to move in that. I want to move in that. And if God says, good, won't you come over here and fellowship with me and we'll work on it. <laughs> Amen? Amen? we got to go after God. That's the key. Going after knowledge on how this works and the formula for how that works and knowing everything about everything and dissecting it from here to there does not cause you to walk in the Spirit. a matter of fact, I'll tell you the truth, one of the things that happens when you get in a service is the minute you preach, you turn everybody's head on. And I mean, the minute you turn the head on, you can forget about a move of the Spirit. Why? I try not nobody's even expecting it. I got the head on. Mm-hmm. Amen? Mm-hmm. So you want to move in the Spirit, you got to get everybody to quit thinking. It's the truth. Why? Because it's not with your natural mind. The move of the Spirit, he even says when we got the Holy Ghost out of our belly, flows rivers a little more. How many of y'all know how to talk out of your belly? Hey, I know how to talk out of my belly. Man, there's lots of languages in there. Amen? Somebody said, well, how do you get started? You open your mouth. You ask God to baptize in the Holy Ghost, and you open your mouth and talk. Amen? Everybody say, good, good, God, God. Amen? Hallelujah. I don't know what you're going to say, but all of a sudden something will come and just say it and let it flow. Amen? Amen. Somebody said, well, well, it just seems so complicated. That's because your head's on. 
Amen? As long as your head's on, it's all impossible. Amen? You're just sitting there with your head on and, and trying to believe in a supernatural God that flung the stars off his fingertips. Amen? Knows how many hairs you got on your head? Oops, you just lost one. Come on. And you're trying to reach Him with your carnality? Are you kidding me? Why do we have praise and worship? To get you out of your head. Amen? Why do we have that time of the flow of Spirit? Why do preachers preach in the anointing? To get you out of your head. So when all of a sudden that thing hits you and you feel it, like, wow, God's here. I preach Pentecostal churches. Pentecostal churches are fun. Because they have the theology of I shall not be moved until the Spirit shows up. How many of y'all know that theology? Amen? So you go in there and they'll get up there and sing songs and man, it will be bad. I mean, it's just like one right after another and you're just sitting there going, oh my gosh. And finally, somebody gets anointed. Amen? And when somebody gets anointed, they may shout. Amen? They may do something. Next thing you know, when that anointing hits, everybody goes, oh, he's here. Woo! <laughs> Next thing you know, when you're in an all-out mood. Amen? Glory to God, whatever that looks like in that church. Amen? That's, I mean, that's what they do. Glory to God. I want to look at this right now in Matthew. In Matthew chapter 16, it says in verse 13, And when Jesus came into the coast of Sicily, Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they say, Some say thou art John the Baptist. How many of y'all know John the Baptist had just been killed? I mean, him and Jesus grew up together. So how can he be John the Baptist? Everybody say, This is his disciples. Okay, everybody say, not the brightest guys on the block. <laughs> Amen. Y'all got to understand, God really works with people after their heart. If you've got a heart for God, you're going to see something. Amen? Amen? Praise God. So here we go. We'll keep going. He says, uh, others Elias, or others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And he said unto them, but whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said, And then, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood have not revealed it to thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I want you to take a look at something just a second and understand this. You know, these disciples were really not very educated. Some think you're Jeremiah. Some of y'all, some of them think you're Elijah. Come on, Do you understand? These are guys that's been running with him. They they looking for reincarnation. They're looking for all kinds of things. We we don't have none of that today, do we? But anyway, then he comes back and he says, Whom do men, uh, who do you say that I am? And Peter stands up and says, You're the Christ, the Son of the living God. Did you know he could have been stoned to death for that? Did you know to name him the Christ, the Son of the living God, if the Pharisees would have been around, he would have died right there. He had to have some boldness to say that. But all of a sudden, Jesus said, Blessed art thou, son of Barjona, flesh and blood is not revealed to you, but my Father, which is in heaven. He said, You've heard from my Father in heaven. Amen? And then he says, Thou art Peter. And there's a comma there. Everybody say, He's talking to Peter. Oh, Y'all, if you've been Catholic and you think he's building a church on Peter, I'm sorry. It's not happening. <laughs> Amen? Listen to me. He said, Thou art Peter. Upon this rock I'll build my church. What rock? Hearing from the Father which is in heaven. Upon this rock I'll build my church, 
and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Blessed art thou, son of bar flesh and blood didn't reveal to you. How many of y'all know Jesus was flesh and blood? He said, I didn't show you that. I didn't tell you that. You've heard from the Father which is in heaven, and upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail. Think about that. Hearing from the Father will give you a rock that the gates of hell can't prevail against. There's a lot of the body of Christ that are hearing from man, and they're reading the Word, but they're not hearing from God. Amen? And therefore, they'll take Scripture, and they'll quote Scripture, and they'll magnify Scripture, and they'll try to fight the devil with Scripture, and they get whipped. Amen? How many of y'all ever got beat up before? I know what a good whooping is. Amen? On both sides. Amen? But here's the deal. When you are, when you are operating out of yourself, that is not going to get it. You've got to come beyond yourself. When you are operating out of your preacher, that is not going to get it. You've got to go beyond the veil of the flesh. When you, you have this person you're really looking up to, if you're operating and believing every word they say and trying to move on that, there may be a time that God uses them to mentor you and help you, but there's a day that you better start hearing for yourself. Amen? And that's the way it is. And so, what we all need, instead of church as usual, is we all need to know how to hear from God. Because if we can hear from God, your house might get paid off. We hear from God, your whole family might get saved. You hear from God, the cancer might leave without a surgeon. The key is hearing from God. Because we have to have rocks that the gates of hell can't prevail against. Now I want to show you the next verse because this is really powerful. Amen? It says this in the very next verse. He says, and I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Alright, where is the kingdom of heaven? Go for it. Yeah. <laughs> but it says in Luke, he said, when they say the kingdom's over here or the kingdom's over there, believe it not, for the kingdom of God is in you. Amen? The Bible says in Romans 14, 17, that the kingdom of God is not in meat or drink, but righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Ghost. How many of y'all got the Holy Ghost in you? Everybody say, the kingdom of God is in the Holy Ghost in me. Amen? And so when he's talking about the kingdom, everybody say, he's talking about in me. That's the reason why when you read in, in King James the Lord's Prayer, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. And it doesn't say on earth. I know some of y'all got other translations that says on earth, but if you go and look it up in the original, it says in earth. Your kingdom come, your will be done in earth. As it is in heaven. Everybody say, in me. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. In me. As it is in heaven. And then you can manifest the kingdom wherever you want to go. Come on. Everybody say, I can manifest the kingdom outwardly. Isn't that the truth? You can do that if it's manifested in you. Glory to God. So we want this kingdom. So looking at this scripture here, when he starts out and he says, the, the very thing he says, and I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom. Everybody say, God, God. is about to unlock some things God. in me. Amen. Oh my gosh. Tell me how good it is. He's about to unlock some things in me. I give you the keys of the kingdom. Why? Because he wants you to hear him. Why? Because he wants you to move in his gifts. Why? Because he wants to heal 
through you and deliver through you. If I, by the finger of God, cast out devils, you know the kingdom of God has come nigh to you. Amen. Amen. Everybody say, in me. In me. See, if it's manifest in you, then you can manifest it to people. But as long as we're trying to manifest it out here, come on. Hallelujah. Oh, my goodness. Good word. But let's keep going. Look what it says next. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be bound in, uh, loosed in heaven. Hallelujah. Everybody say, we're not talking about heaven. We're not talking about the third heaven. We're talking about the kingdom. Everybody say, the kingdom is in me. So whatever I bind up, it's not going to work in me. But whatever I loose, it will be loose. Everything God has is in the kingdom. And that kingdom's in me. And He's given me the keys of the kingdom. And I can either bind it up or I can loose it. In other words, if I want a flow and healing, I can allow God to work that healing out in me. Amen. I can loose it. Everybody say, it's my choice. My choice. Listen, you know, everybody saying, oh, God, just come down and give me something. God said, I done gave it. All you got to do is loose it. A man said, well, I just don't believe I could ever cross that over anything. Well, that's fine. You just bound it. Come on. Did y'all get a hold of this? He said, I don't understand because it's you that has the power to bind and loose. And the heaven that he's talking about is on the inside of you. And God said, I want you to loose the gifts. I want you to loose the blessing. I want you to loose the mind of Christ. I want you to loose the voice of the Lord. I want you to loose me in your earth. Okay, y'all know, go home. But no, with that understanding, we come back to the Scripture and find out that the rock that the gates of hell can't prevail against is when we hear the Father. Everybody say, I can hear the Son. My sheep know my voice. He calls his sheep by name. And he leads us out. Everybody say, Jesus is my Moses. He leads me out of Egypt, leads me out of curses, leads me out of destruction. Come on, y'all see what he's doing? He's leading me out of sickness and disease, a whole nine yards, poverty. He leads us out, just like he did the children of Israel out of Egypt. Amen? He's our Moses. Amen? Hallelujah. Everybody say the Holy Ghost. When he talks, he guides me in to all truth. Isn't that the truth? When he starts... Guide me in. He guides me into the truth of the Word. He begins to enlighten the Word to me. He begins to reveal who I am in Christ Jesus, who God is to me. Amen. And He reveals. Everybody say, He guides me in. I love it. Jesus gets me out and the Holy Spirit guides me in. But when the Father speaks, it's a rock. Amen. It's a rock that the gates of hell... Somebody said, well, I thought it was Jesus as a rock. Well, every time the Father speaks, it's Jesus. In the beginning was the Word. So that just made it okay for somebody. It is really hard. That theology just stuck there. It's not, oh, it's going to be Jesus. It's going to be It is. He's the Word. Made flesh and walked among us. Amen? Amen? And so when the Father speaks to you and it takes over your flesh, Amen? Then Jesus is alive in it. Amen. Come on. It'll raise you up. It'll quicken your moral body. That's what it'll do. And so it's a powerful thing. So here we are. Y'all get this? Amen. Thank goodness. Amen. This is good. And so I want to take you to the scripture because if it's so important that we hear from God in order to win. I mean, you know, I've been born again for years. I would hate to be born again since I was 11 years old and losing every day and not knowing why. Right. Amen? And, and have a, every 
once in a while victory by accident. Amen? And so I just knew God was going to do it. Well, you knew that 40 other times when it didn't happen. So we've got to move out of fantasy, y'all. We've got to get into reality. God actually has a plan. And we've got to move into His plan because nobody else's is going to work. And you know, when you have a glorious church, it's made that way by the washing, by the water of the Word. And the Word there is rhema. It means a living, spoken Word from God. Everybody say, a bride, a bride. that hears Father. Hears Father. Hey, Amen. That's good stuff. Amen. So y'all won't do it very fast. That's good, Brother Tony. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. He liked, he liked people talking to him, didn't he? Yeah. Praise God. Anyway, I want you to look at something. Go with me to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 28. Everybody say, I'm going to get God. I'm going to get the Father to talk to me. I'm even going to get Him to teach me. I'm going to get Him to make me understand. How, how would y'all like that to happen? Amen. Well, I, absolutely. So, let's look at God's plan for that. Amen. So, they said, why are you going in the Old Testament? Because the Old Testament is quoted here in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Amen? And everybody say, that's the tongues chapter. <laughs> Amen? Look what it says here in verse 9. Whom shall he teach knowledge? Now, whom is he? Whom? Who's he? Everybody say God. Everybody say, we're asking who God's going to teach knowledge to. Now watch what it says. And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Now listen to this. Did you know that unless you're hearing from God, you don't even understand doctrine? So they can lay out doctrine, you can put it in front of your face, and you go, oh yeah, I know that. You can even quote what the definitions are, but you do not understand it until God has revealed it. Everybody say, even the basics of my salvation. Even my foundations have to be revealed to me by the Father. That's why Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. Amen? Hallelujah. Jesus is saying, I'm, I'm the way you get to the Father. How many of y'all have come to Jesus? Hallelujah. All right. But it all works. Everybody said it all works. Because you don't understand inheritance and then you'll understand what's going on in the praise of God. Everybody says you get it all. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. So here in Isaiah 28, whom shall he teach knowledge and whom shall he cause to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. Everybody say, if I'm on the milk, it'll never happen. Amen? And then all of a sudden he says, For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. Oh my. Yeah, do y'all know what that means? That means you go to the computer and you look up all the references and you build your own message. That means you go to the Strong's Concordance and you say, Wow, I'm going to study the Holy Spirit. And instead of praying and going after God to stay the Holy Spirit, you just go in there and you find all the scripture about the Holy Spirit and you build yourself a little thing. Everybody say self-talk. No. Now, but watch what it says here. He says this. He says, wow. Did y'all hear he said, wow? He said, uh, in verse 11, For with stammering lips and another tongue he will speak to this people. We're, that's what's quoted in 1 Corinthians 14, with standard lips of another tongue. Everybody say, speaking in other tongues. Amen. Amen. Everybody say, God, God is going to speak to us in other tongues. Hallelujah. You don't think you know what you're saying? Listen to this. 
For his family lives in another tongue where he speak to his people, to whom he said, This is the rest where we will cause the weary to rest, and this is refreshing, yet they would not hear. Everybody say, Praying in tongues is the rest and the refreshing. Amen? But people say, well, I don't believe in that. Well, it's okay. You'll never have the rest of God, and you'll never really be refreshed. I mean, it's your choice. You can do this the hard way, or you can do it God's way. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So anyway, all of a sudden, he goes beyond that, and he says, But the word of the Lord was unto them precept, Upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. Watch this next part. That they might go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. Everybody say, if I'm my own teacher, or I make somebody else my teacher, other than God, it's not the devil. Amen? Because what it's saying is there's got to be a brokenness that's got to come to you. There's got to be a place where you cry out for God. Can I, can I tell you something? If you could do this by yourself, you would. Because it's human nature to do it by yourself. Amen? But God wants you codependent on Him. Amen? So he says, the day you try to self-teach yourself, and you go after people to teach you with it's and ears, come on. He said, you're going to go backwards, you're going to be broken, you're going to be taken, you're going to be snared. Somebody say, ouch. But what happens with stammering lips in another tongue? Everybody say, show my time. You don't have to say mine. <laughs> Do you own do you know? But praying in the Spirit, activate God as your teacher. You all will see that in the Word. It says over in, in, in John chapter 2, 1 John chapter 2, where he says in verse 27, 28, he said that same anointing which abides in you teaches you all things. You need not a man to teach you. Amen? What's he talking about? When you are anointed by the Holy, by God, you're anointed by the Holy Ghost. It says in verse 20 there, you have an option from the Holy One and you know all things. Everybody say, I'm a, a know-it-all. Amen. What does that mean? That means you are connected with the God that knows all things. And what that means is if you truly need an answer, He can give it to you, but He's not going to give it to you, y'all, unless you yield to His method. Everybody say, the Holy Ghost in fire. Y'all remember John saying, I need baptized with water and repentance, but there's one that's coming by your night whose shoes I'm unworthy in the latch. He's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost in fire. And then on the day of Pentecost, when they were all gathered in one accord in one place, there was a rushing mighty wind that blew into the upper room where they were sitting. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. And cloven tongues like as a fire set on each other. Everybody say, the fire of God is when I yield my tongue to God. Everybody say, if I don't yield my tongue to God, the fire of God just burns everything I have up. Come on, you understand? I mean, literally, if you've got an idol in your life and you're not yielding your tongue to God, that idol will stay there until God burns it up. Yeah, that's the reason our whole church is yelling, send the fire, send the fire. None of them praying in tongues, they all go home, their house is on fire. Come on. Their, their cars are on fire. Their business is on fire. They're losing everything. Why are they losing everything? Because they're doing it their way. Amen? But if you yield your tongue over to God, amen, then the fire of God, what? The Bible says, building yourselves up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Did you know that when you pray in the Holy Ghost, it causes faith to come up in you? And did you know when faith comes up in you? I never heard one time somebody yell, we're all going to die when they was full of faith. Come on. It just don't happen. 
all of a sudden your tongue begins to say the right things because God puts a faith in you for to say the right things. Amen? Somebody say, I want God to teach me. Well, you really do. Because the other alternative is to go backward, be broken, be taken and snared. How many of y'all know people? Have you ever hear somebody say, man, I didn't have trouble until I got saved. <laughs> you ever hear Holy Ghost people say, man, since I got filled with the Holy Ghost, life has just been horrible. I mean, I, it's like I'm losing everything I got. You know why? Because they're self-teaching and running around after teachers, but they're not chasing God. Mm-hmm. That's the reason why God's telling us to return to our first love. And if we return to our first love, amen, then God will get involved in our life and we'll get rocks at the gates of hell can't prevail again. And when he speaks to us, it gives us the ability to bind it or loose it. Amen? And if I say, oh God, I like that. I agree with that. Go ahead. All right, thank you, Lord. You said I I can heal the sick, so I can heal the sick. Guess what? Now healing is loose. Why? Because God gave you a rock for it. Amen? And instead of buying it and saying, well, you know, I, I, I've not really been taught in that, and I've not really been trained in that, and, you know, I had never seen that happen. Instead of buying it up, you got to say, well, God showed me I heal the sick. Y'all line up. Come on. Why well, do you know God said, isn't that a shame that you've been in church that long? You don't know. See, that's how codependent we've been built in our churches, y'all. Amen. We're supposed to need each other, but we're not supposed to be totally dependent on each other. We're supposed to be dependent on God. Amen. Amen. So, so we've got to move on. This is what we've got to do. We need a we need a move of God that produces a glorious church. Amen. What would happen if you had a church that all of a sudden they were built on hearing from God? Well, let me tell you real quick. Oh, you got to be careful for that, brother. You know, some people are going to really get off track. They're really going to miss it. Some people are going to hurt people. Well, you're hurting me by not hearing from God. That's right. Amen. You're about to destroy me by not hearing from God, telling me what you think, giving me the wisdom of man, and not willing to hear from God. And training me to hear from not hear from God, because if I hear from God, then I might get off. You're causing me to fall backwards, be broken, taken, and snared. So you tell me, are you doing me a favor or not? Amen? I'm I'm painting now. How many of y'all get in the picture? Amen? Amen. You say, praying in the Holy Ghost. Woo, revelation. (laughs) Praying in the Holy Ghost. Loosen. Loosen God. Loosen God all over me. Amen? Whatever he wants to do. Amen? Hallelujah. Learning from the Strong's Concordance. (laughs) Listening to just what the preacher says and not going after God myself. How many of y'all got the picture? Hallelujah. So, wait wait just a second. Zeal and fire of God, love of God on this side. Laziness. Wait, laziness, sleep, yawning a lot, <laughs> missing everything that God is doing. Even when he does it, you go, well, we'll see. Are you healed? No, you get somebody out of their wheelchair. Are you healed? Well, we'll see, brother. I had a woman, man, her eyes got open. She could see. She had these glasses that looked like cocoa lenses. She, she could see. And I prayed with her. She could see. And she's reading everything. She's telling everybody what all she can read. And she's doing it. And then all of a sudden, she's going back to her seat. And she takes her glasses and put them back on. <laughs> had a guy come up. This is no joke. Came up deaf and God healed him. Healed him. He takes his, I told him, take his hearing aids out. He took his hearing aids out. He's hearing perfect. 
He turns around and starts putting his hearing aids back in. I said, man, you don't need them. He said, I paid good money for them. <laughs> That's people that can't see. Amen. They can't see. You can't even see it when it happens to you. You stand there. I haven't been able to remove these two fingers in ten years. Well, we'll see. You don't see that? No. I, maybe. What is that? That's blind. That's blind. That's somebody that hadn't been going after it. Well, I go to church every Sunday and I pay my tithes every Sunday. Good. You're just a dead Christian. Doing religious things. Come on. you got to come alive. you got to go after God. And I'm just telling you. I got through with the Holy Ghost. Nobody told me I couldn't, so I prayed in tongues seven hours a day. Seven hours a day, I prayed in tongues. Shout out I had a drive every day. I had to drive, and it was at least seven hours, so I prayed in tongues the whole time. Just told me out that kind of But I got pulled over police by the police more times than you'd ever dream. I get caught up in the spirit, and they pull me over. I had one policeman, first time he pulled me over. First time he pulled me over, second time. <laughs> He walked up my car, and I rode the window down. He walked up, and he went, <laughs> he goes, what are you doing? He said, I said, I'm praying. I said, man, I just got caught up. I'm so sorry. I know I was speeding. He said, man, he said, you, you need to be more careful while you're driving. <laughs> he said, I'm not going to give you a ticket. I said, you don't get close to me. <laughs> <laughs> it took him three times to pull me over before he gave me a ticket. <laughs> they just get caught up praying in the Holy Ghost and get caught up and God starts downloading and talking to you and you're like wow revelation after and you really I'll be honest with you you don't care about anything in the natural anymore it's like nothing there ain't one thing in the natural though. you're not one of the guys that's standing in the prayer line always wanting something you're one of the guys like man come over here I'll pray for you I mean, it just changes your whole world because you're not worried about it. You're thinking, man, if me and God are this close, how could I have a problem, really? Yeah. Uh -huh. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Put it out there, While ago, we sang in the Spirit. Somebody said, well, I'm not used to telling me to sing in the Spirit. Well, you need somebody to tell you because you've never done it. Mm -hmm. Amen. I will pray in the Spirit, and I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing in the Spirit. I will sing in the understanding also. Everybody says it's an act of my will. Yeah. Somebody says, well, God, I have to give me a tune. No, you don't. You can make one up. Mm -hmm. Just sing your tongues. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Sing pretty, though, okay? <laughs> what are we doing here? What are we, we are out here at La Quinta Inn. We are in a smelly room up here because they have a flood next door. It stinks when you walk through there. Hey, man, I come in here and it was hot. It really stunk. Hey, man. And we're in here on a Monday night, and we've been worshiping God. But, I mean, every one of y'all have a church to go to. Every one of y'all got something. What are you doing here? You're saying, man, i I got to have something. There's something missing. There's something I had not got a hold of. I'm telling you something. You start praying in tongues all the time, and what you was missing will disappear. Because Father will manifest. Are y'all here? A Father will manifest. And he, when, once he manifests, somebody will do something bad to you. Everybody say they'll do it. They crucified Jesus. Come on. So they'll do something bad to you. And you're like, huh, I can get mad at them. I can have unforgiveness. But you want me out of this? Are you kidding me? God forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And then you stay right in the flow. You stay right in what God's doing. Why? Because you don't have that presence. You don't have that secret place. You don't have that place when all of a sudden you wake up in the morning and you think you might need something and by afternoon it shows up. Mm -hmm. Amen? 
That's what happens when you're in first love. I mean, baby Christians are more mature than the maturest Christians. Come on, why? Because they're connected. They're connected. They're connected to God. So all of a sudden, they're, they're saying a little prayer. Oh, God, save my family. The next day, their whole family's in church. Come on. And then we went and switched the God of love off for the God of knowledge. Come on. That was the same tree in the garden that cost man. And we went after knowledge, and then we was trying to get smart enough when we went and won somebody to Jesus. And I'd love to win somebody to the Lord, but I'm not smart enough. Even the preachers tell you not. Come on. But it's funny. You get born again. You don't know nothing. And you're winning people to Jesus. You're bringing people to church and they come with you because they're looking at you going, wow, you got something. Amen. They're looking, y'all. The world's looking. Everybody say, I want a rock from the Father that the gates of hell may prevail again. I want revelation that I can lose in me so that I can loose it to other people. Hallelujah. Y'all understand? That's what God's doing. That's what God wants to do. Tonight, God's moved in. How many of y'all been touched by the Lord? How many of y'all got healed in here? God touched you and healed you or something in here. It's powerful. The hand's going up. Hallelujah. Healing took place. How many of y'all heard something from God that spoke to you that you realized that was just for me? Amen? Look at all the look at all that. That was just for you. Isn't that amazing how God is just for you? He just got over there, that prophetic flow came. Hallelujah. And he just he just said it just the way you needed it said so he knew he was talking to you. And he did it for me. Amen. Well, this is the way I talk. That's crazy, isn't it? That's what God's able to do. He's able to persuade you. He's able to bring you the, oh, he's talking to me. That was me. Sometimes your heart will burn. Sometimes you'll go, wow, that was God. That was mine. Amen. That's good to have that going on in the service, isn't it? But you know what? It's even better when you ride down the road in the car. Woo! Wow, he'll show you something, and you'll speed up if you don't have cruise control. <laughs> Amen? Yeah. See, back when I was doing all that, I didn't have cruise control. I had to be here because you had to drive, you know. Thank God for cruise control. You get caught up now and still drive speed limit. Listen to one next to you and say, I think I'm going to pray in tongues. <laughs> I think I'm going to start loosening what God said. Y'all know this little message that I gave you? That if you didn't know anything else, you could walk with God the rest of your life and you could see God move through you the rest of your life. You will be the head and not the tail. You will be above and not beneath. Amen. You will walk in the favor of God. You will walk in the blessings of God. You will carry miracles everywhere you go, and you will live in miracles everywhere you go. Amen? Just this one message. Somebody said, well, what about walking in love? God is love. Just telling you how to connect with Him. Amen? So stand your feet. Thank you, Lord. Good idea, but cool, young my shit. Cool, somebody Thank you, Lord. Help yourself. Thank you, Lord. Help yourself. I'm excited. I'm excited. You know what? I think there's a glorious church about to come up. I really do. I think there's a people that's about to get fired up for God, about to do something with God, and I believe it's going to be with Him. Amen? Hallelujah. Lord to God. Put that to you. I think I lift your hands. Say, Father, I repent for not yielding myself to your spirit and praying in the spirit. For not receiving what you 
say to me? Father God, wash me in the blood and give me a fresh start. Manifest in my life and cause me to hear your voice and manifest your kingdom in me and through me. Father God, I realize I can't give away what I hadn't got. So I receive what you say, what you reveal, and I understand because you give me the understanding. And Father God, in the name of Jesus, I'm excited about knowing you, about walking with you, talking with you, and experiencing you. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done in me as it is in heaven. Give me this day my daily bread. Somebody say amen. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. It's good. It's good. We serve a good, good God. Amen. We're going we're gonna to minister some people to that. Hallelujah. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, amen, it's a great night to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Jerry Skeen is right over here. And if you don't know Jesus as your Lord, from right now until you go home, you can walk over here and Gary will pray a prayer of salvation with you and help you get saved. Amen? Is that cool, Gary? Yeah, amen. Hallelujah. Everybody say, that big old guy. <laughs> the devil ain't going to mess with me. <laughs> amen. <laughs> We're going to minister over a few people. We'll let God do some things. But how many of y'all know that prophetic move up front was a powerful move? Uh-huh. And you saw all the hands of people getting things? You know what that is? That's God being your God. That's God getting personal with you. Amen? That looked at one day and said, and a man didn't have to touch me. Isn't that great? Isn't that great? That's the way we need to start receiving from God. Amen? Glory unto God. Glory unto God. Hallelujah. Hey!